This hobby of astrophotography can induce the feeling of wanting to make use of every possible clear night. But sometimes you have other things to attend to on a clear night. Know that feeling? Well, this video is about how the proper gear can still allow you to get data in these situations. But first, a little introduction. This YouTube channel exists for a long time already, but just over a year ago I started posting videos in which I really intended for people to watch it on YouTube. Before that I only used the channel to post planetary stuff and time lapses, so I could share them on Facebook and Twitter and other social media websites. This February I passed the 100 subscriber mark, which allowed me to pick a custom name, a custom URL, and I went for Koplamp, which means head torch in Dutch. And now this channel is already around the 1500 subscriber mark, which is really, really awesome. Thank you for your support. I hope to grow the channel even more and have more people find my content and have it help them out in their own astrophotography journey. As always, feel free to leave your suggestions and feedbacks in the comment section. Enough about me, let's go into the video. First a little disclaimer, I'm an ASI Air user. Um, I've got an ASI Air Plus, I also got an ASI Air Pro and um, as such I have never used a laptop at my mount. Uh, and I'm sure that the information that I will give in this video, which is tailored around the ASI Air devices, is also very possible to do with other tools like for instance Nina or SGP, Sequence Generator Pro, I believe, uh, APT, Astrophotography Tool, and probably more, even more software that I don't know about. This video is about the ASI Air and how to do it with this nifty little red box. Doing unattended astrophotography with your gear is best done if you also have an electronic focuser. I'm using the ASI Air, as I just said, so I am using the EAF. Um, I have that in another video, which is probably up here somewhere. This EAF, there are two variants of it. I have the older one on my William Optics scope, which is also, it requires power. The newer one I have on my Edge HD, which you saw in a previous video, and it only runs on the USB connection. I use an Ioptron CEM40 mount, which I can control using my ASI Air Pro or the ASI Air Plus, which I recently got. The ASI Air Pro now is the dedicated control unit for my William Optics GT81, uh, which is a refractor telescope. The ASI Air Plus I've put on my Edge HD800. And the main reason for that is that the um, internal storage and the added processing power of the Plus makes it a control unit that is more suited for cases in which I want to use the HHD for planetary work, for instance. A small warning is appropriate too. Never start an unattended plan with an imaging setup for which you haven't determined yet that the meridian flip might cause mount collisions. Using a website like telescopius.com, you can make plans for mosaics. You can also see graphs that show when an object is above the horizon. It however does not show when that object you want to shoot is behind that pesky tree or a neighbor's rooftop. For this purpose I recommend using Stellarium with a custom landscape. Earlier this year I uploaded a video both in English and in Dutch on how to make such a custom landscape. I usually have two reasons for creating a plan. The main object I'd like to shoot is only going to appear in view late in the night or I like to shoot a mosaic or want to shoot multiple objects in one night. 
Another tip is to make use of an app like APT Darkness Clock to determine what would be the best start time for the session. With narrowband filters you can generally start a bit earlier. Also in that case, at least for H-Alpha, the moon phase is also less important. To get the best results with an unattended plan, it is also preferred to have the mount already polar aligned. For this purpose, I have a set of markers driven into my lawn. If I put my tripod legs in that position, I will be close to proper polar alignment already. Even better is when I leave the mount in the garden after a previous night, which didn't require an unattended start. In case of a refracting telescope, make sure your draw tube is already in an approximate focus position. The EAF requires the focus to be not too far off for it to find the correct focus point. In case you have your ASI Air reset the EAF position to zero, it is advised to write down your approximate focus point per filter. After all this, you can start to run and cross your fingers. Oh, and um, don't be that person that leaves their lens caps or button off masks on the scope, okay? Go and have your fun night out while the scope is busy basking in all those photons and convert it into gigabytes of data. Next will be a show reel of a few nights of unattended image plans from my garden. Thanks for watching. As always, feel free to like or unlike on the video to show me and the YouTube algorithm if this video was a hit or miss. Leave a comment if you have questions or other feedback. And if you want to get notified of new videos, you can simply press that little red button below the video that says subscribe and click the little bell icon.